So the Gordon Hayward to the Pacers rumors are starting to heat up a little bit more. There is some news that came out about this and the last video I made about it was pretty popular on this channel so I wanted to keep you guys updated. If you didn't see that first video I'm going to link it in the description. I encourage you to watch that first. Essentially what was out then is that the rumors were stating that Miles Turner and Victor Oladipo both wanted out of the Indiana Pacers and Jared Weiss of The Athletic reported this and also put together the fact that Gordon Hayward is home to Indiana so it would kind of make sense if the Celtics started a trade talk with the Pacers. And now the news that broke just recently is that there are some officials within the Pacers organization that have interest in trading for Gordon Hayward. So this just gives some more credibility to those initial rumors that came out. And it starts to look like trading Gordon Hayward to the Pacers is an actual possibility. There are obviously still a couple of factors that will dictate whether or not this is a realistic thing to hope for such as how highly the Pacers value Miles Turner along with Oladipo but you know I would hope that the Celtics only go for Miles Turner because I think if we go for Victor Oladipo as well the Pacers would try to get more out of the Celtics like Marcus Smart and more of our draft picks. Also I think that just getting Miles Turner alone would make a huge difference to the Celtics and their starting lineup. I think that getting a solid big man is the biggest thing we need to address this offseason. So I think that if we just trade for Miles Turner, it would be a success. So being the investigative person that I am, I headed on over to the NBA trade machine and looked at some of the things that people were suggesting the Celtics do. I did see TJ McConnell's name come up quite a bit in these potential trade packages. And I think that makes sense because the Celtics would probably want to get a better backup point guard than Brad Wanamaker. The thing is, I think the Pacers like TJ McConnell and I'm not sure they really have an incentive to trade him to the Celtics. So I'm going to throw on the screen the trade that I thought was the best and then go over why it would be beneficial for both teams involved. And basically what this trade includes is Gordon Hayward, Romeo Langford, and our number 14 draft pick going to the Pacers for Miles Turner and Jeremy Lamb. So I'm going to start off with looking at it from the Celtics point of view. And look at this. I even made these fancy graphics to illustrate it for you guys. So the first reason the Celtics make this trade is because it ensures a return on assets for Gordon Hayward. And basically what I mean by that is that if Hayward opts into his contract and plays out his last year with the Celtics, worst case scenario, if you think about it from Gordon Hayward's point of view, he, he might be thinking like, you know, my time in Boston was injury ridden. We've played below low expectations basically every year and a lot of the fans here don't even like that I'm on the team so I might want to fresh start somewhere else and try to go play for a different organization and just the fact that that's a possibility to me is enough to trade Gordon Hayward now and get some assets back for him rather than letting him walk in free agency when his last year of the contract is finished even if Gordon Hayward would be the best person in the trade just getting some assets back for him in general would be better than potentially having him leave and getting nothing for him. So the next point is improving our defensive paint presence without sacrificing on offense. So Miles Turner would be a clear cut upgrade at the center position in my mind because not only is he an amazing shot blocker and would be able to limit people like Giannis, Embiid, and Bam Adebayo, but he's also a pretty nice offensive threat. He'd be able to space the floor and he shoots the three better than Daniel Tice. So I think that he would mesh into our offense pretty well and he would be a huge upgrade on the defensive end. And now touching on the Jeremy Lamb aspect of the deal, you'd be upgrading the bench unit on the Celtics with someone in Jeremy Lamb who can create their own shot. The bench was extremely weak on the Celtics and it didn't really have any weapons. So getting someone like Jeremy Lamb would be a big upgrade for the Celtics bench. And last, just looking at the numbers briefly, you would lessen the cap impact by 9.8 million. So the Celtics would be able to free up a little bit of money by making this trade. So now let's look at it from from the Pacers perspective. Why do the Pacers make this deal? First of all, they receive the best player in the trade who is Gordon Hayward and it's less risky taking him on an expiring contract because there is at least some incentive for Hayward to stay in Indiana. It is his hometown and it could actually be a good place for him to start this next chapter in his career. On the flip side of that, worst case scenario if Hayward decides not to stay, it's a quick way to clear 34 million in cap space because it is an expiring contract so if Hayward walks then they're freeing up quite a bit of cap space anyway and that's part of the reason that they throw in Jeremy Lamb to this trade as well because Lamb isn't their best contract money-wise so they're definitely freeing up some money if Hayward does decide to walk.
walk. They also would get Romeo Langford, who definitely has the potential to be a cheap impact player. He's still on his rookie deal, and we did see some flashes of good play from Romeo Langford the year that he was on the Celtics. Unfortunately, he did have to deal with some injuries, but there is some upside there, and it works out money-wise for the Pacers. And the Pacers would be able to get into the first round of this draft. I think, as it is, the Pacers only have the number 54 overall pick, so the Pacers would be able to get a decent round one pick and kind of bring some youth with potential into their organization and start the process of building around Gordon Hayward. So that's it for this one, guys. I will keep you updated on news about the potential Gordon Hayward to the Pacers trade as I find out about stuff. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this specific potential deal or if you have some stuff that you would want to add or change about the trade package. Feel free to comment down below. Just keep it friendly and I will see you guys in the next video. Smash that like button if you enjoyed today's video and consider hitting that subscribe button if you want more NBA content like this.